We're going to take a keep that has 760 ring power per hour, and it's going down right now. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today we're taking down a keep, and I don't know if we can get the job done. I hope we've got enough marches to defeat the armies that are here, and after we defeat the armies that are here, that we have enough power to go, enough siege power, by the way, to go and take down this sort of stamina or duration, durability of this structure, which is a very large number. Now, you can see here all the different marches that are attacking uh, off to the side. My marches are on their way. I hope that I land in time to actually get a hit. There are 40, oh no, 20 defending armies that are level 40, which is going to be pretty rough. And then 12 million durability on this thing before we actually take it. Yikes. This could be pretty intense. There's still 19 armies left. And my marches are going to get there in 7 seconds. I think I'm going to get a hit. For sure. I, I think there's no way around my uh, uh, tasting defeat is probably what this is going to be. Oh boy. Here we go. Marches are hitting. Oh, I got a draw. I got some draws. Okay, I didn't do so bad, hopefully. Those reports, by the way, are now here. My first march is, I mean, it's only 35, but I have what I have, right? Uh, one and a half thousand dead uh, against the defender. I did okay, and it's not the same sorts of stuff that we see when capturing large tiles, which is large beasts, which makes sense. This is a dwarven keep. There's dwarves defending this thing. This actually, yeah, no, that makes sense. And then the other draw that I had here is, my God, Dwalin, you got, you kind of got your butt kicked. This is my, like, stronger dude for taking tiles. 2,000 dead. I think it's because I'm taking out Dane Ironfoot. That seems bad. That dude seems pretty beast. And, uh, yeah, the only thing surviving is, like, my archers. Yikes. And did he help? Oh. Okay, so he also, before taking that fight, took another one and helped somebody finish off their attack. Wow. Okay. So that wasn't like a clean start to the fight. Neither was this one. Okay. No, that makes more sense. Wow. So are we going to get it? Uh, Nine left. I don't know if we're going to take this thing down, honestly. I think this might end up in defeat. Uh, which could be very awkward. In terms of how long we have, I mean, it recovers in 57 minutes. Yikes. There's still eight marches hitting, it looks like, but maybe those are just marches that are in draws. I I don't know. I don't I don't know if we've got the punch to get this job done, but there are more forces arriving. The problem is that then we're gonna have to refresh our marches over here. So I, my marches started over here. I stationed them in this fort in order to even get here. And so I wonder after the draw ends, where are they gonna go? Are they going to go back to the fort? Are they going to go back to the tile that I launched from? I I'm genuinely uncertain. I get to look at this thing again. We just get a peek. Eight armies left. The question is, are the people that are still coming in to hit going to do enough? And then can we refresh and take down the 12 million durability on this thing? I'm not feeling good about it. Let me put it to you this way. I'm not feeling good about our prospects. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. 12 million. Recovers in 56 minutes. Eight armies left still. But I mean, we've got at least eight marches going toward it. Right? Right? The problem is that my allies, who would have been completely defeated, are going to be sent back to their forts, I guess. And they'll have to refill those marches from their forts, which is a time-consuming process. If, if you survive, you don't have to do that. If you get defeated, dot, 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 dot. And I think most of them, well, I mean, maybe if enough marches landed at the same time, maybe enough of them would have gone to a draw like mine did, and then support would have arrived, perhaps. That's what's going on and why there's still seven left. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. Well, this seems like a good time to explain a little bit more about how this works. So 
there's a bunch of armies stationed here. You send your troops to go and attack. You defeat the armies that are stationed there, and then you have to siege this thing and take it down based on the durability of the structure you're sieging. This has 12 million durability. You could see that, by the way, off to the side over here. I can't actually put it in the center of my screen like I want to. And that durability goes down based on the siege damage of your units. If you want to see, for example, the siege potential of an army, if I go into my report and I get a look at my Dwalin, uh, here is what I've got. If I get a look at the units, I can tap the units on this screen and you can see the siege value that they have is right by my head over here. So uh, each unit, each individual unit has that siege value. So the more of these you have, the more siege attack you do. And it takes stamina to make that attack to siege it. So I think the problem here is probably not can we take down the 20 armies. Although it's, it's getting a little sweaty in here. It's feeling like this is not going to make it. But... I think the problem is not going to be these 20 armies. I think the problem is almost certainly going to be the stamina. And to answer the question of whether or not we've got what it takes, man, uh, we'll be back toward the end of this time, and I'll let you know how it's going. Oh, this is a yikes. So, the uh, draws finished out. And, I mean, I just got completely freaking wrecked. Another 1,100 dead. Oh, uh, no. And over here, another 645 dead. So in total, I committed 1,100 plus 1,400. So up to 2,500 plus 400. We're just going to call it 3,000 to make this easy. Plus another 600, 3,600 plus another 2,000. 5,600, over 6,000 troops. Well, that's a proper disaster. There's just, like, no way around how savage that is. Uh, we did, however, finally take down the number of armies. If we actually capture this sucker, it'll all be worth it. And if anybody should be taking losses, I mean, certainly it should be me. Because when we look at the production of members of my fellowship, I'm number one. So if anybody should be taking a hit, it should be your strongest player. And it's me by ring power per hour for our faction. So like, I mean, if anybody's going to take a hit and get wrecked, it should be me. So that just happened. Uh, yeah, GG cheesy. Woo. Okay. Now people siege. And by the way, because my marches got defeated, they go all the way back as I was describing with that incredibly long 10-minute walk back to my fort. Theoretically, I could have spent the gold instead of cheaping out and put another fort right next to this sucker, and then I would have uh, sort of retreated back to that fort, and that might have been a better play. But I'm still going to have some amount of time to march my butt back over here, reinforce my armies with more troops, and then smash at this thing a couple times to try to take down the durability. It's at 11.1. .1. We've got 50 minutes to take this thing down. Another 11 million power of siege durability. So we'll be back to see. Can we get the job done? I do not know. Dude, we are freaking crushing this thing. This has only got 339,000 durability left and rapidly dropping. Oh, yeah, this is a goner. We're going to lock this thing up with way more time than I thought we would. That is fantastic. Man, I, wanna, I want a way to take notes on who did the most damage to this thing. I, I want to know who, who contributed. Boom! There it is, baby. Kernanvale Keep, we got it. Okay, well, the little indicator was on the screen for like two seconds and now it's gone. But hey, we got it, baby. Faction occupied. Absolutely amazing. We did it. 760 ring power per hour. It's been captured. We locked it in. All these armies are here, so it's hard for me to see any of the other stuff that, that took place. But I think, aha, ha, 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 boom, boom. Who did the most damage? This guy. You're darn right I did. 621,866. Yeah, I contributed. My name's on the top of the board.
as it should be. I mean, you know. And that, by the way, I've I've spent like three dollars on this game. Three dollars. Okay? Freaking crushing it. Commitment. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Chioko got second, and Cerberus got third. Cool. First capture siege rankings. Oh, yeah, I know I'm not on that list, but Harley, I gotta go talk to them. What? 2.4? I mean, I guess, quite frankly, you know, like, if you wanted to get a ton of siege damage, you'd have, you know, five or six marches nearby, and you would have, uh, I don't know, uh, full marches, right? Like, tons of troops. Like, if I wasn't constantly taking level 200 tiles for the Alliance and losing shitloads of troops, then I think I could also have six. But maybe there's, maybe there's something that they're doing. I'm gonna go check in with them and see, like, what kind of unit they're doing, what the best siege technique is. Uh, but, dang, we won, baby. We got the job done, which now puts me on the ranking board for personal production. Okay, well, personal production doesn't include fellowship. That's a fun fact that I just learned. <laughs> okay, personal production. Cool. And fellowship production, that probably includes, like, everything that we're doing here. And I don't know if this number is good or this number is bad. 6,210. I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a lot, maybe it isn't. It's probably, it's probably okay. Right? You tell me. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Lord of the Rings Rise to War videos. And one other fun fact. Now that we have taken that keep, we have this whole zone, which is now blue, which means that you can use the 10 ability point ability to take a march anywhere in this zone. And then you could build a fort there, theoretically. So that's kind of an interesting idea to like use the 10 ability point ability Drop a fort over here, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I could just put one fort there and one fort there and then one fort over here and we get to this keep. That's one way to do it. I could long-range strike. I think long-range strike is maybe designed if I wanted to go, like, somewhere really far, like over here. If I look all the way down, like, if I was going over here, I don't have plans to go to either of those locations. I'm just saying. If I wanted to, that's what I could do. Uh, but getting control of that territory is definitely a big deal. And for those of you who watched my crossing video the other day, if I go all the way back to wherever that crossing was, which I'm pretty sure that's somewhere in the vicinity of over here, perhaps. If I find that crossing, here it is. If I tap this, you can see now the ring power per hour is blue. Uh, and... The thing that's significant about that is we've passed the chapter in the story over here, boom, that makes it so that structures and landmarks occupied by the faction begin to produce power. So there you go.